Great. So, warm welcome to this uh, workshop. Um, as you can see by the background from this presentation, it's an NSO back, um, presentation. So, uh, we're going to share some uh, practical example on how to deliver uh, a few of those things we've been discussing during this Congress. Uh, but first, I think we should introduce ourselves. Okay. Um, my name is Patrick Head Jung, um, and I'm here in a little bit of split role, uh, hence my purple shirt. But now I'm I'm wearing my Swedish scarf. So um, I've uh, worked with this training program that's called Value Based Leadership uh, for a few years as a staff of the Swedish Scouts. So that's why I'm here in this role. That's kind of expert on the program. And. Uh, I'm Martin, and I'm, um, well, my day-to-day -day, uh, work in scouting is uh, I'm the Deputy International Commissioner of Sweden, but I've also been participate, a participant uh, at Value-Based Leadership course a few years ago, and I hope to be able to provide some from below perspective on, uh, on the course and what impact is, it has had on me. Thank you. And I'm, my name is Gustav Ern, uh, and I'm uh, the Director of Education of the Scouts of Sweden, um, or for those of you who come from Nordic countries, I'm also the headmaster of our Folkhögskola, which is like a community college through who has the overall responsibility for all our uh, leadership training in Sweden. I will start by giving you a brief Okay, uh, I will start by giving you a, a brief background uh, why this training course uh, developed, uh, a little bit about the objectives and how we've been working, some about the impacts uh, or the side effects of the course, and then Patrick will go into uh, discussing a maybe a little bit more about actual value-based leadership and the course curriculum. and. As Martin said, he will finish off with um, sharing some of his uh, his thoughts from a participant's perspective. So, w we've been discussing uh, quite uh, in quite a few workshops during this Congress so far uh, what tomorrow's uh, society is requiring and how we can prepare our members and our youth for that society. And we've been working on revising training systems in Sweden on and off for quite some time. And the last time we realized that our trainings wasn't really good enough. Um, we identified an, uh, a need in the society as a whole, not only within the scout movement, for another type of leadership training. A training that would focus more on values, on self-knowledge, self-esteem, and leading yourself um, in a diverse and multicultural society. And we couldn't really find that. Neither did the Scouts of Sweden's regular training scheme. Is this good? Okay. Neither did our regular training scheme uh, provide this opportunity for our members. So, all these thoughts, uh, we wanted to, to develop a new leadership training course for young leaders in particular. And thanks to our uh, head of state, the Swedish king's interest in youth development and, and leadership issues, uh, we had the opportunity to actually start to develop this course. I will share with you two of the points that our background analysis showed. Uh, as I said, uh, we have, and this has, we've been discussing this during this Congress already, that uh, in this rapidly changing society that we are living on, new skills are required from our uh, coming leaders and 
we need to, to prepare our members for that. And the other point is that we discovered, at least in Sweden, and this might be different from country to country, but at least in Sweden, we didn't meet across loads of different borders as much as before. We didn't meet the, uh, across the generations as much as before. No one, no one in Sweden lives with their grandparents anymore. Uh, the only uh, regular uh, relationship with older people is to your parents or your teachers. So that was one. Um, we didn't really include all the society in meetings and activities. The civil society was sort of living on its own. The corporate part of the society was doing their thing and the public sphere was doing their thing. And we think that all these parts of the society has a lot, a lot to learn from one another. And if we don't meet, we're never going to learn from the other. Sweden has always been a very multicultural society as well. Uh, but the Swedish Scout movement is not reflecting that society. Our member base isn't reflecting the, member ba uh, the uh, members of the Swedish society as a whole. And therefore, we couldn't offer our members the opportunity to meet in a diverse environment either. So these are just some of the uh, background analysis uh, that we made. And of course, this seems really, really thought through now in, in hindsight, and that we have this huge and perfect report showing all these things. But in fact, there was different projects going on at the same time, and all together, they showed this kind of of a picture. Uh, some of this was made during the training renewal, some in the program renewal, some in uh, uh, gender projects we were doing, and so on and so forth. But now in hindsight, when we put all these things together, it shows that we were very right on time for the Swedish Scouts when we started to develop this. Just to so you know, have a little, little bit more uh, about what this Swedish training scheme looked like and still is looking like. Um, as I said, we're currently revising some of this, but uh, basically it looks like this. We have a short introduction. It's about three hours uh, for new leaders. Uh, it's basically telling them this is the scout movement. You can find more information here. Uh, yeah, that's it about. Uh, we have a basic training course uh, for about a day or so uh, with really basic skills necessary to, to carry out the scout program. And then we have something called scout leaders training, which is in total about a week. And after that, we have the wood badge course. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, uh, scheme with, with different courses. The pr problem is here that different people want different things and they learn in different ways. So a one-way scheme like this doesn't really match the requirements of our uh, members. And that's also a reason why we're revising this at the moment. But if we were to put in this course, value-based leadership in this, it would be somewhere up here. It's a course on the advanced level. Some parts they share with the wood badge training. Uh, some parts isn't. The wood badge course traditionally has been taken from leaders that are over 30 years old in scouting in Sweden. You, most of the participants have been leaders for five to ten years at least. And we wanted to offer something different here. So value-based leadership was targeted for much younger uh, participants. So you need to be 20 years old and you cannot be over 25 when you participate. Please feel free to ask questions as we go along if you like. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session in the end, I guess. We haven't discussed it, but I think it's a good idea, uh, if time. But uh, please feel free to ask questions as we go. 
So we set up uh, a number of objectives for, for this course uh, to meet the requirements we have discovered. First off, we wanted to improve the self-knowledge and self-esteem of the participant as an individual, as a leader, and as a member of a group. And the order of these three are very important. We focus a lot about if you cannot lead yourself, then you cannot lead others either. So the, the order of these are really important. We wanted to challenge the views of leadership, or the traditional views at least. We wanted to let the participants welcome, uh, explore their personal values, uh, how they coincide with the organization's values, and with their own leadership style. We wanted to provide tools for self-leadership and the leadership of a group, as I said. Uh, and finally, we wanted to meet this, to do this in, a, in a diverse settings, where we could challenge norms and prejudices, uh, and see that, after all, we might not be so different. No. This isn't. These are more like, uh, and and you're very happy to to have some of, of this material afterwards. But that's more like uh, sales materials, to be honest. It's in there. Oh, great, great. So it's in there. Uh, briefly about the core structure, as I, as I've already mentioned, it's targeted for 20 to 25 year olds members, but it's not only scouts, so this isn't a traditional or typically, typical scout course. Uh, our rule is that no more than half can be scouts, and we're aiming at not more than a third. So all the other participants come from various youth organizations within the Swedish society. And this is to both spread our views on leadership but also to, uh, as I said before, the Swedish Scout movement does not reflect the Swedish society. So we needed to invite others uh, to really, really try this. Uh, re practically, it's four weekends. Um, you do some homework and some group work in between the weekends. You do some tests to profile your leadership skills or your personality which are then discussed during the weekends. And throughout the course, you have a mentor, a personal mentor from top or middle management level, uh, mostly from the corporate sector, but also from the public sector. This is both to overcome the generational boundaries, but mostly to get to know someone closely across the sectorial borders. Um, all these mentors are experienced leaders within their organizations. So it's also really good for the participants to have this uh, opportunity to discuss day-to-day -day leadership issues. Sure. Um, all the four weekends are taken in one uh, group, so it's the same participants throughout one course, uh, and that's since much of this is about getting to know yourself. Uh, you need to be in a sort of a safe environment, so we don't want to change the groups throughout uh, the course. So you start, and and they are, as Patrick will uh, talk about later, in a special order as well. I saw that when I said that not more than half and uh, could be scouts, some of you were going like this, like what? Are you doing a scout course, not for scouts? That seems kind of waste of resources or I don't know. Um, and this wasn't intended from the beginning 
but we've had quite a good number of side effects, really, really positive side effects from this. So first off, since we started this in 2007, about 100 um, youths have gone through the course a year. That means over 600 young adults have taken the course. At least half of them is not from the Scout movement, which means that throughout the Swedish society there are at least 300 young adults on leading positions in their respective organizations that has a really, really close connection to the Scout movement and knows what we are doing. They know how we look upon leadership and that we are not just in the woods playing with sticks and stuff. We have reached over 40 different organizations through this. Uh, some of them are Save the Children, the Red Cross Youth. I've translated some of these myself, so um, I'm not sure they call it like this. But the, Sw the Swedish Young Muslims for Peace and Justice. Uh, the Youth League of the, both of several different parties in Sweden, uh, for example, the so Swedish Social Democrats and the Conservatives, on the same course, I think. Uh, Fryshuset, which is a YMCA, YMCW organization. Uh, they usually say that they are the largest meeting place in Europe for youths. So, um, we recently started to work with the student organizations of the School of Management and Business on uh, one of our universities in Sweden. Um, one of their lecturers were like, yeah, that's really good. These youngsters come out and think they know anything about leadership, but actually we haven't ta taught them anything about it. So it's really good you come in and help us out here. And uh, we've also collaborated with Swedish... Swedish Youth Federation for LGBTQ Rights as well. So on each course, we mix organizations uh, and we mix different backgrounds to increase the diversity. All of these have, as I said, had a mentor from top or minute. Yeah, sorry. I think actually Patrick is better uh, of answering that question. Yeah, he can get in. Because he won was one of our uh, course leaders in the, in the, during the first courses. Uh, as I said, each and every one of these participants have had a mentor, which means that at least 600 mentors from top and middle ma management level in Swedish companies also have a really close connection with scouting leadership training uh, programs. All of these have, at least during half a year, gotten to know a Swedish scout or a Swedish youth from another organization, and they've seen our leadership training from close distance. So you could just imagine if any of these were to hire someone and it says scout on the CV he would probably or she have a really good chance of at least getting to an interview because the, the boss to be knew what we do in scouting. So some of the Swedish companies is Volvo, Ericsson, IKEA. Adidas might not be a Swedish company, but they are, are in Sweden, as well as KPMG, Telia Sonera, Sonera. Stena Handelsbanken is one of the bigger uh, banks in Sweden. We have also collaborated with uh, Sparbanken, which is another Swedish bank, uh, KPMG, and about 40 other companies. Um, and of course, this has also meant quite a lot for us when fundraising to other things, because a lot of people know about what we do from close distance, as I said. I think actually I will hand over to Patrick now. Yeah.
yeah, the mentors are doing it for free. Uh, some companies even pay for this uh, to be able to send mentors uh, to the course. That's pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, we've managed to get companies to pay quite a bit of money in order for their senior management to be mentors on our leadership program. And I just remembered uh, a quote from, from uh, the CEO of Adidas in Sweden. He said that, no, this isn't to be nice to you or anything. These you young adults are our main target. By mentoring them, we get to know them, and therefore we can make better products and know how to sell it to them. So it was really sort of a business incentive that he used uh, to participate in this. And I think that's a good thing. If he can reason like that and doing this for us at the same time, it's a win-win situation. It's actually very few of them who do it just because to be nice. You know, they're, they're commercial businesses and they have a commercial view on this as well as all the other things they do, they, it's an investment for them that they figure that they will um, will get a return on eventually. You know, some sooner sooner than others. Um, I uh, not, now it's we've talked quite a bit about like the background of this program started in 2007 and kind of the analysis that went into starting it. Of course, when we talk about a program like this from a very formal um, perspective or when you read a book a booklet like this you get one picture right you get one perspective uh, and then if you if you take a leadership course and a really good one I mean you, you think of the best course you've ever been to um, that experience that you have can never really be captured in a book can it I mean it's it's uh, filled with a lot of you know, personal experiences and feelings and, and things that are very unique and personal to you right? and that, that never can really fully be explained by someone else. And so I think this is a, this is a trick also in a situation like this to, or a difficulty to how do we explain this program in a way that makes sense and makes um, justice of, of the course and it's it's really it's really um, hard or impossible to do that so we can't but we can do a few things to get at least a taste of of what it is um, and I thought that we'd actually I thought we'll do a little rearrangement here in the room um, and just if we can if I can have your help and just rearrange the chairs so that we get kind of a half circle instead of this cinema setting or school setting. Now we need to be aware of this camera thing going on. So we need to have an open kind of path here in the middle. But apart from that, maybe we can get it like a half circle thing. Do we, ha Do we have any followers online? We don't know. Hello out there, if you're there. Maybe you're not there right now, but maybe you are in an hour from now. Maybe you'll be watching this afterwards. We don't know. If you are watching this online right now, feel free to make a comment. I'm here. Introduce yourself. That would be great. We would love to hear from you. And I think they can participate in some of the exercises as well. Oh, I'm sure they can. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I know they can. This is, this is perfect. Now I'm starting to feel more at home. <laughs> because this is, this is what's, what we do on the course. You know, we don't do the school setting thing. And for a very specific reason. Um, when you sit in a school setting, in rows, there's something, there's a, a message being told to the participant. And that message is, that the person standing here knows much more than you know. 
And my job here is to convey that message, all my knowledge, and it's for you to soak it up. You know. And we don't believe that. We don't think that that's the case. Um, we believe that you have the answers to your most important questions. And we certainly believe that you together have many more answers and probably many better answers than I do on my own. So uh, a, way to, a way to communicate that is to break this hierarchy of me, the trainer, the teacher, the know-it-all, and you students who are just empty vessels ready to be filled. I thought we'd do uh, one just short exercise. We'll start, well, it's, I can't really say that we'll start this because we started a long time ago, but we'll continue this in the same way that we start the value-based leadership course. And that's simply with uh, introducing ourselves. And the way we do that is we'll just go around and you say your name and something you're really good at. Okay, so your name and something that you're really good at. And you can pick anything. It can be something in scouting, it could be your professional job, um, something, a hobby, whatever it is. It's up to you to choose. So your name and something you're good at. And maybe I'll start with you. Hello, my name is uh, Peter. I'm from the Danish Baptist Guide and Scout Association. Uh -huh. In scouting, I'm good at uh, running a new project uh, set them, set them, uh, begin the project, not uh, to uh, make the project, but to start the project. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Lars, I'm from the Swedish Scouts uh, and Guides. Um, I'm really good at doing the dishes very effectively. Hi, I'm Martin, as I said, from Sweden, and uh, I think I'm very good at listening to people and hear what they say. My name is Timo, I come from Finland, and uh, I'm good at uh, creative problem solving, maybe. Hi, my name is Perto Hella, I'm from Finnish Scouts and Guides. I'm very good at focusing on whatever I'm doing at the moment. Hi, I'm Omblin from Les Good in Belgium, and I'm good at planning and organizing myself. Hi, I'm Emmanuel from France, um, and I am a good writer. Hi, I'm Catherine from Foss from Belgium, and um, I'm good at motivating people. Hi, I'm Darren from Hong Kong, and I'm very good at sleeping on airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine from WAGS in London, and I'm becoming very good at listening to all of you and taking the excellent ideas that I've uh, gathered here at this Scout event. So really well done to everyone. And uh, we do very similar things at WAGS, but uh, I'm really impressed by everything I've seen. So I'll be extremely good at taking that back to London and seeing how we can, you know, emulate what you're doing. I'm Qureshi from India, Deputy Director, Scout Leader Training. I'm responsible for the quality control, especially with regard to the training of Bharat Scouts and Guides. I'm here to have, uh, have some new idea how we can develop uh, value-based leadership and more new ideas from the other countries if we have. Thank you. I'm Joycha Nagao. From South Sudan, I am uh, commissioner for training. I train the people to join the scout. Thank you. Uh, training. Uh, I am uh, Reverend Manuel uh, Sokiri Luger uh, from South Sudan Scout Association. I am working in the government, uh, in the Scout. I am uh, International Commissioner. And I am good in planning, uh, management, and organization. 
plus the teaching, but I'm not a teacher. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Roman from Germany, and I'm good at arranging with new situations. Uh, I'm Lion from Singapore. Um, by profession, I'm a teacher. Um, in the Scouts, I'm actually in charge of, uh, involved in the program for quite a while. Uh, I'm good at sleeping while standing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm caught from uh, Hong Kong. I think I'm, I'm good in playing, especially with the youth. Uh, hi guys, I'm Jerry. Um, so I'm a part-time education promoter and I'm a scout leader. So the thing I'm good at, I don't know where, I'm picking stuff up on the go. Yeah. And if some of you might, my name is Gustav and I'm really good at sailing. And I'm Patrick and I have a, also a sea-related skill. I'm very good at Eskimo rolling with uh, my kayak only using my hands, without a paddle. I think that's, that's supposed to simulate where the, when the Inuit is out paddling and has her arm bitten off by um, um, some animal. I was going to say shark, but I don't think there's any sharks up in <laughs> Greenland. Never mind. Uh, so this is, this is the same way we start uh, any course on value-based leadership. And why do we do it that way? Um, one thing is that our participants, 20 through 25 years uh, old, they, um, it might be a, tricky, a bit tricky for some people to say what they're good at. And for some of them, it's actually almost impossible to stand up and say, okay, hi, I'm Patrick, I'm good at this. Some will go, I think I'm good at. Some people say I'm good at. I'm pretty good at. I'm not too bad at. And we kind of push them a little bit and say, okay, okay, that's good. Could you just, just try, just practice. You know, just saying, I am good at. Whatever. Don't downplay the importance of it. Don't. You know, don't start by excusing yourself. It's pretty simple. Just say, hi, I'm Patrick. I'm good at Eskimo rolling. And this is, you know, this is a very minuscule thing, but it's something that keeps coming back during the course. Uh, and it's something we build on uh, throughout the four, the four modules. Um, and... Now, even though some of you started adding other things, uh, such as your uh, role in your organization and what organization you're coming from, etc., we usually don't start with introducing ourselves from the perspective of your organization, but just who are you as an individual? Not your title, not your uh, affiliation, etc., just you as an individual. And that's also something that's very... Um, very um, um, oh, now my English is gone. <laughs> uh, but, but something that's quite special for the for the training, because usually when we come to these sort of events, we have a normal way of doing things, and one of the things that we do on the course is we try to break the normal way of doing things. And one of the purposes of that is to really work with inclusion. One of the main themes on the course is leading for and with diversity. And diversity is a very tricky subject because we love to talk about it, uh, but it's quite hard to act it. Because diversity uh, is assumes or is, is built on a lot, of, a lot of different norms of which many are invisible to us. The, the obstacle to diversity, for diversity is, uh, to a large extent, invisible to us because it has to do with habits uh, that are more or less unconscious. Um, and like Gustav said, on the course, only half of the participants are scouts. 
and the other half are non-scouts. Now that's not entirely true because we also started running courses with other countries. So in 2009, we started with the Swedish-Finnish cooperation uh, and now we're also doing a Baltic course. So scouts from Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. So the course is, is spreading and uh, on those courses, there's still a majority of scouts. But still the course is also open for, for non-scouts. So just, just take a short time to think about that. If you were to run a course not only for scouts, you would have participants from other organizations as well. What would you need to do in order for them, them being the non-scouts, to feel welcome and included on your course on the same premises as the scouts? The objection is to get, let's say, let's pick um, a sports organization. The national ice hockey team of, um, uh, or the national, yeah, the national ice hockey team of Hong Kong. <laughs> if you would run a leadership course with young leaders from the Hong Kong ice hockey team, <laughs> How, what would you need to do, what would you need to change in order for those participants to feel as welcome and included as the scout participants? Just take a few minutes, maybe not even a few, one, one and a half, talk to the person next to you, what would you need to change in your courses, in your leadership courses, one thing that would uh, allow the other participants to feel as welcome as the scouts. All right. Understand the question? Great. Let's go. Oh, okay. That's it. Sorry, you don't get more time. <laughs> Let, let's just hear a few, a few ideas. Anything that you would need to change in your course in order to get the others to feel welcome. All right, great. The jargon, the use of scout-specific words and terminology. Exactly, great thing. Dress code, yes, very important. I mean, the re one of the reasons why we wear a scout uniform is to create a sense of unity, right? But the flip side of that is that those who don't have that uniform can't belong, or can't, but it's, it's more difficult. To, to belong. That very easily creates a sense of them and us. Okay, more ideas? Yes, sir.
Okay. So my, my question then is, if you have participants on your course that are not scouts, yeah, but if, 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 if we imagine that you would have participants on... <laughs> right, but my, my question is, you're, now, now let's imagine your job is to create a course where half of the participants are not scouts. Yeah. But this, this example, the value-based leadership course that, that we're talking about here, half of the participants are not scouts. So what, what would you need to change if half of the participants were not scouts? I'll get back to you later. Think about it. Yes. So what what could be an example from from your experience or from <laughs> Right. So it's a lot, a lot of things that we do that we don't necessarily think about that, okay, let's see, we've always done this game, so everyone knows how to do this, but actually it's just something that we only do in scouting. And, and it's one of those unconscious, almost invisible barriers that if, you're ever, if you ever come in new into an organization, there's stuff happening that you don't really understand. It's a little bit hard to make sense of it, but after a couple of times, then they're as natural to you as it was to anyone else. And then you're all already tainted. But exactly. Icebreakers might be a, a exact. Yeah, I mean, we, we might do, my experience from scouting in Sweden is that we do quite a few games where we you know, are physically close to each other. You know, we might be hugging or sitting in each other's laps or whatever it is. And that might not work as well, for example, when the Swedish scouts are doing a course with the Swedish uh, Muslims for Peace and Justice. You know, that might be a barrier, for sure. All right, let's get a couple more examples. Yes. I I think I know what you mean. I'm not going to say I know, but I I I, I get one idea. <laughs> I'll uh, I just wrote as moving from very specific scout contextual skills to maybe maybe we could call it moving from scout skills to life skills. Because that's really what we're educating for when it all comes down to what matters. But we do it via scout skills quite often. Okay, let's. I'll go this and then come this way. Uh, yes.
Mm. That's that's an interesting. Um, that's a really interesting perspective, and I think it. Um, I'll write it as. Yeah. Teach or explain scouting, and I think we. I think we can. We can spend quite a bit of time discussing that one. This one, if. If we should or if we shouldn't, and what the pros and cons of, of doing that. If we want to introduce them to scouting, or if we want to keep it scout neutral, so to speak. But I think that depends on what the goal with the course is, eventually. Yes, let's see. Oh, sorry. Mm, right. Exactly, right. Yeah. Okay, let's see, were there any more? Yes? Okay, and do you think that's more important when we have non-scouts? Yeah, uh, no, no. We should also be clear on the scouts. Sorry, that was almost a leading question, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that might very well be true. Um, And I would say that's a very general rule as well, that we don't always adhere to. Yes? Okay, yeah, I think I understand what you mean. And I'll I'll address it a little bit when, when we've gone the, the whole... Let's see, there were a couple of other suggestions. Yes. I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean. Uh-huh. Mm, okay, 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 okay. Right. So I, if I understand you correctly, instead of focusing on scout, non-scout, we focus on other other aspects, uh, and I think that that's that's something really that's something really good. Let's see how should I write this? Um, a little, little visual explanation here. Non-scout. <laughs> yes.
Yes, I kind of interpreted that in my own way. But does that make sense? Instead of focusing on this scout, non-scout focus on the question why. All right, right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of focusing on the differences that has to do with organizational focus on, yeah. Okay, good, perfect. Yes, sir. So uh, instead of patrol system, you would use group A, B, C. Very, very good. You've brought up a lot of the points that we have had to deal with in creating this course. And I would say all of them are, are correct. Uh, and all of them are extremely, extremely important. And we will, no matter how many of these we can think of beforehand, we will realize that there are those that we haven't thought of. Things that we do as scouts as a very natural, unconscious thing. And when someone outside of scouting is faced with those traditions, words, jargon, uh, whatever it is, habits, there, it adds to their feeling of not being included. And we just have to continue to be aware of those things. Now we've chosen on the value-based leadership course, so because I think that one question is, okay, so how much of scouting can you take away and still have what we believe is a good course? And we have, the way that we've dealt with that is that we use the scout method, no doubt. Absolutely, most parts of it, I would say, most, not all. However, we don't call it the scout method. Because just by calling it the scout method, you define us and them. We use the patrol system, but we don't call them patrols. We call them small groups. And we don't, uh, each patrol gets to choose their own name, rather than we assigning name to them. And that way, the group can take ownership and of their identity as a group as well and it's not me as a trainer that chooses what they are to be called and already there starts the group process within that within that patrol okay who takes the initiative to come up with a group name for example you know and how is that discussion how does that discussion happen etc William is smiling when he's walking in the door he sees that we're in a circle and he's taking the course himself so he he recognized the value-based leadership feeling already in the room. I think the, these are these are, um, are very, and <laughs> bylaws. It's funny that you bring this up because there's two rules on value-based on the value-based leadership course. One is be on time, <laughs> and the other one is no drugs or alcohol during the course. You know, those are the two rules. And that, that, then, uh, then there are some expectations and some principles that we use on the course. But it's, it's important to bring up those things. But there's only two rules. Yes? That's a very good question. Good, very good question. And I think it's a matter not only of what do you actually call it, but it's very important from the mindset of the trainers and the organizers. Now really, what is it that we're running? And it's to answer the question in, in one way is it's a 
It's a leadership course for young leaders in the nonprofit sector, and it's organized by the Scouts. And it's organized by the Scouts in cooperation with one other organization, sometimes two other organizations. That means that the trainer team also consists of trainers that are both Scouts and non-Scouts, or in the case of Sweden, Finland, both Swedish and Finnish trainers. Uh, and that's, that's also an important aspect of it. So we don't invite the Swedish Muslims for Peace and Justice to take part of a scout course. But the scouts, together with the Swedish Muslims for Peace and Justice, uh, organize a leadership course, inviting their members to take part of it. Now the scouts own and develop the concept, and we're kind of in, in charge of of the course in that sense, but it's not promoted or explained as a scout course, per se. Does that make sense? Does it answer your question? Okay. And it's a very important one, and also in the mindset of the trainers, because it's very important that the trainers also don't use only a lot of scout examples, and maybe even make a little bit more effort in using non-scout examples because there will be a, tenden a tendency anyway to kind of lean toward, toward scouting. Okay, yes? Right. Yes, they, they receive a diploma or a certificate from um, Gustav, actually, <laughs> from the Swedish uh, Scouts Folkhögskola, which is a leadership college, yes. And they also receive a diploma from the Swedish king uh, during a ceremony at the Swedish palace in April each year that he personally signs and gives to them. Nice and, uh, and a pin. Yes, and that's another, I mean, it's just one other example of, okay, we don't, there's not a badge for the course. No. But we realize and value the importance of symbols. Uh, so there's a pin, something that is more inclusive rather than you know, a very scouty badge, so to speak. So, so, and there's, you know, there's hundreds, thousands of those little small details that we can that we have to think of when we run a course with not only scouts and while patrick is is uh, taking from uh, the next slide i will just say that this process is extremely extremely valuable for us as a scout organizations as well since we want to recruit new members and to make them feel welcome we need to be aware of what are we doing that eventually would exclude them. So all this is very, very um, helpful in a lot of, of a lot of uh, other situations as well. So it's not just something that's valuable for the course itself. I mean, on, on a scout course, maybe we would have a flag. Um, what's it called F flag racing, and uh, each morning we don't do that at value-based leadership because the non-scouts of Sweden would not do that. They would think that's quite weird. Uh, I don't know what it's like in your countries, but that would, that would be strange from a non-scout per perspective. Uh, we, we might be able to introduce it later on in the course as a kind of a fun thing, uh, but we don't do that. Uh, what I want to do very briefly is to... Um, give you a perspective on in, from, which, from which cultural dimension this course originates. Because I think that's very important to keep in mind, knowing what the, what the course uh, is about. And I don't know, does anyone know of the uh, World Value Survey? Is that familiar to anyone? Okay, uh, great, then it'll be new. Uh, <laughs> World Value Survey is... A, um, it's a worldwide investigation of basically of values, a way to 
try to see how are we different in the world when it comes to values. And I mean, for, for us, as scouts, we tend to think that we have the same values, the scout values, right? But values are also extremely contextual uh, when it comes to culture, right? Because we, yes, we have some scout values, but we also have cultural values um, from the minute we're born and up until today, right? And so some social scientists have been interested in and uh, see, so how can we how can we understand cultural values? Um, and one way, what they've discovered is that a lot of it can be blah, 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 there. Um, a result from this world value survey is that they've managed to plot all countries along two axes. So this axis is traditional values versus secular rational values. This axle is survival values versus self-expression values. Okay. So they found that this, this is one way to categorize values in the world across cultures. And every country uh, is positioned somewhere on this map. Now interesting in this context of value-based leadership and the Swedish scouts is where is Sweden on this map? And for those of you who didn't see it before, we're the most extreme country in the world when it comes to values. No. Of course, we, like everyone else, tend to think that um, A, we're the normal ones, and B, we're the best. And that's just embedded in the human mind, I think, because we all tend to think that way. And, but in reality, Sweden is extreme. And it can definitely be argued whether we're best or not, but let's not even go there. But we can, we can, we can, uh, we can see that we're extreme. So we have the combination of secular, Sweden is one of the most secular countries in the world, meaning non-religious, non, here it's um, explained as traditional or non-traditional in Sweden case. And so the uh, combination of secular and self-expression values. This axle is sometimes explained as um, collectivistic values versus individualistic. So we have the combination of individualists who don't believe in God. We don't believe in the family and we don't believe in God. I mean, if you want to you know, put it very <laughs> bluntly. Of course, that's not entirely true. Swedes uh, treasure the family as well, and there are quite a few Swedes who are religious. But compared to the rest of the world, that's something that is, is quite Swedish. And so what does that mean um, in when we create a course like value-based leadership? Because a lot of our values typically are related to our idea of a higher power, or how we relate to our family, you know, or the collective, the, the larger family, it can be a clan or small part of uh, society. And if we don't, if we don't believe in any of that, so what do you believe in up here? And that's actually something that uh, a lot of young people in Sweden are dealing with fighting with, struggling with. If there isn't something that I, that I believe in, what is important to me? What, where do I want to go in life? There's, God is not telling me to do something, or at least if he or she is, I'm not listening to it. Uh, and my family isn't telling me what to do. And even if they are, I'm not listening to it. So what should I do? And someone once described to me, and I think it's pretty, um, a pretty good image, that being young in Sweden today is like you, you're this very small boat, and you're put in the middle of the ocean, and you're told you can go anywhere. Everything is possible. The possibilities are endless. You can do whatever you want. 
go. And then you put there in the middle of the ocean, and you're like, yeah? Then where do I want to go? You know. Oh, anything is possible. Just, just do it. You, know. you realize your own potential. You can do anything. There's no boundaries. It's all up to you. And yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good, that's a nice message. But it's also a little scary. Because sometimes I need a stick to, for support. Or I need a compass. I need a map to help show me the way. Because I'm, when I'm in the middle of the ocean, I have no idea where to go. Yes, I can go anywhere, but where do I want to go? What is important to me? What goals should I set for my life? And I think these are questions that a lot of you recognize as well, even if you're not living in Sweden. And those of you who are working with young people recognize those questions. There's something that, that a lot of young people are struggling with today. Okay, so what do I do? Want? What, what, what do I want to do with my life? I mean, it was the question that um, Dr. Khaled was talking about this morning. Right? The first rule, let's dream together. What are your dreams? You know, and a lot of young people, and I don't think that's typical for the Arab region. A lot of young people today, when asked, what is your dream? I don't know. We don't typically know that. And in that context, I think this... Um, quote from a participant that wrote this right after finishing the course is, is quite, quite powerful. Um, and I think this, this quote much better explains what value-based leadership is about than this brochure. Uh, so I'll, I'll just let you read it on by yourselves. So I think that this captures the, the spirit and the goal of value-based leadership uh, in a great way. And that it's very much about finding, developing, finding and developing that compass within yourself. Because even if we as an organization or adults would like to give an answer to what goal you should have or what, which road you should take, they're not very likely to follow that. And I'm not even sure it's the, the best answer. I personally, and, and we believe, that the answer to your most important questions, you have yourself. But you will need some help in finding those, those answers. The nature of values in Oh, this is hard to see. It says value-based leadership and scouting. Because this is a question we get quite often. You're working with values on this course. And half of the participants are scouts, half are non-scouts. How do you work with scout values on the course when, when half of the participants aren't scouts? And the answer is we don't. We don't try to impose scouting's values on anyone. And it's not about shaping uh, participants in a certain mold. We do that in scouting, and we should. And I mean, that's, that's what we do in scouting, and, and let's be honest about that. We do want to shape uh, young people in a, in a certain mold, and sometimes that's more restrictive than, than at other times. But 
in value-based leadership, the, we, we say that the nature of values in scouting are normative. We have the scout law, so we have those values defined, right? But we can't do that in a course with non-scouts. So instead of being normative, we call them descriptive. So the idea for the participants is not to learn scouting values, but to find their own values. To, by looking inside themselves, being curious about their own values, developing those and letting those bloom out. And so the process looks quite different between scouting and value-based leadership. In, in scouting, we're shaping good citizens, good world citizens, right? And we have the scout law that defines what is good. And in a course like this, it's much more an explore, exploratory process. We give very few answers, but we ask a lot of questions. And we believe that the participants have the best, the best answers to their own questions or the questions that we also provide. The very first question we ask when they, when they come to the course is, what is your dream? After introducing themselves with name and, and what they're good at, uh, they get to present themselves to each other uh, with their dream. 15, I think it is, or 20 years ahead. And then we have a cocktail party, a mingling where they walk around and introduce themselves to each other with their dream. So just imagine the focus, the shift of focus, if you're introducing yourself with your organization or if you're introducing yourself with your dream. Very few of these have done this before. And just like Dr. Khaled said, said this morning, we're not used to it. It's another way of introducing ourselves. I want to make sure I answer the question that you had earlier. Uh, what was the question again? I said I would. What was the question you asked earlier and that to Gustav and I said I would answer it. Right, 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 right. Uh, yes, is the answer. We managed to get the diversity from the start in terms of a diverse group of participants. Uh, so from the very first course, half of the participants were non-scouts. But it's quite a bit of work. It's not easy to get it, uh, but each course is a cooperation between the scouts and one other main organization. And so their job is also to get their participants, so to speak, because very few non-scouts are willing to come to scout course, but they're willing to come to a course, period. So it's very easy, or it's very important not to brand it as a scout course. But yes, we have managed to create diverse groups from the beginning. Yes. Um, being very conscious about time, I could um, go on and talk about the content of the course forever. But I think what's, and, and I mean, we'll be still here. The content is to some degree explained in this. But I think that what, what's important is to get an idea of what it, what it means for the participants. Uh, because that's really the outcome of the course. So I'll, I'll give the mic to, to Martin and maybe to Ida and maybe to Viliami and maybe to, yeah, those are the ones that I know have taken the course. Uh, if they want to share just, you know, a few words about their own experiences um, before I'll let Gustav finish with what's, what's ahead. Because, yeah, I'm not going Well, thank you very much. Um, I took the course in 2000 and something, a few years ago, and um, well, uh, having this workshop started me thinking, well, 
once again of uh, what what uh, I actually learned and what I actually gained from from the course and um, I think that one very important experience was working in the diverse setting of this group it was a patrol or we didn't call it a patrol but still it's a patrol but with people from I think four different youth organizations and from at least three or four different countries, cultures, religions. With, and we worked in this group for more than one year. Even though we only met physically four times, we still kept in contact and had tasks and well worked actively in this group for, for quite a long time. And that was an experience that I really hadn't had before. And that has been very useful for me studying at university or doing other things like this. Um, also in civil life, not just in scouting, it has been very, very useful to have that experience of having been working in a group and especially with a group. Because it wasn't just that we did tasks, we also worked on, well, the group development and we discussed a lot of, well, what is happen happening with the, this group during time. And um, that's something that you usually do not do in um, when you got a school project or so. You're focused on a deadline delivering and not so much focused on, but how are we doing it? And what is the process? And what is happening, happening with the group during time? And that was something that we focused more on during this course, which was a new and different perspective, which has been very useful. I also want to talk a little bit about the mentorship, because it was mentioned briefly earlier, but I think that the mentorship is, is one of the core things with this that makes this course unique. Because having um, a mentor from a company or the public sector uh, is a very useful and well, you learn you learn a lot from that as well, and not just it's it not just about meeting a person a, a few times during a year. It's also about developing a relation with someone that you never met before, and uh, gaining trust in each other, and um, yeah, meeting over the generations, and also having a, like a real company that you can go to and that you're welcome to, to go to, um, that makes you feel special in some way. And um, as a young person, that that's, could be quite important for the future life. Um, I think I will stop there and ask if Viljami or Ida will, would like to fill in something. Yeah, I think, um, I think Patrick has explained very much what's so good about this course and uh, Martin also mentioned some of the contents as I see it, the mentorship and the diversity that you gain a lot from. To me, the greatest experience was to attend this course that had this perspective that there were non-scouts there that had this perspective of being a course. Because that helped me a lot to gain all these competences that we gain in guiding and scouting to my private life. To me trying to build a career, try to achieve something, to have these dreams that are bigger than just the guiding and scouting world. To actually use all my competences to achieve something. And I could very much recognize in this quote here to find what is it actually I want to do. And that's what I gained from the course. I found a direction. And I think we have been talking this whole weekend how good we are in leadership training. I think we should try and use this perspective to make sure that we can use how good we are in leadership training to give to our guides and scouts so they can use it and be prepared for life. Not just prepared for guiding and scouting, but prepared for life. Because that's what I think I got from it. I learned from Martin that this is the best place to be because then you don't <laughs> get that one in your eyes. Yeah, hello, I'm Vilaymin from Finland. I've taken this course in 2009. 
Uh, uh, I think the, in the, the I'm going to coin the 2009 time my first time because I was a trainer uh, on a course that ended ended last last spring and that was kind of my second time taking the course because that's when I realized that I now that I now I actually get these things. <laughs> the first time was kind of a practice round. So, but from the first time, um, one of the most biggest learnings was that I actually realized that yes, these other people they are they are quite different and they have different set of values and they behave differently and they they feel different kind of they work in a different way than I do. So that was kind of the biggest aha moments for me from that that course. And actually, saying the word course is is not what what is what is like worth of this process. I think my friend Robsu put it well that it's it's not a course, it's something that will fundamentally change the way that you approach life and see life around you happening. So that's that's probably something. It's a it's an eye opening experience. Thank you all for sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I've seen it before. So uh, we're almost out of time, uh, uh, but as Patrick said, uh, we'll stay and ask, uh, answer all your questions if you have any. Um, I will just sum up with, I mean, the the experiences and the journeys that you that have taken part of the course have made is tremendous, and I'm so jealous that I didn't get the opportunity when I was uh, younger. Uh, but I think we could recognize that uh, value-based leadership is both giving uh, our members and we're doing a great thing for the entire society. And I think that's very important as a scout movement, not only to care about our members, but to care about those who aren't members too. And from an organizational point of view, it has been access a success story. It has started to put Swedish scouting back on the leadership map again. Uh, it's not hard anymore to go to a company or to an organization or to a governmental agency or anything else and say that we're actually quite good at leadership in scouting because the word is starting to spread around and it helps our fundraising and as I showed on the previous maps a lot of people that have participated in the course in various ways, either as a mentor or something, is out in the Swedish society. So I think from an organizational point of view, it has really, really been a success story as well. I have forgotten uh, what my last slide looked like, so... I will say a few few things about the future development because as everything else nothing is perfect and nothing is completed um, we're continuing to uh, revise and develop the course curriculum all the time almost every year we add some parts and take some other parts away we learn as we go along and for each new organization that we're working with and for each company that we meet we learn new things, and then we adapt the course. What's going on right now is that we have our first multilateral uh, course, as Patrick pointed out, and that's kind of a different kind of, of diversity than the ones we're having in Sweden with different youth organizations. So it's going to be really, really interesting to evaluate that uh, this spring. For sure, we will continue to have co courses both in Swedish, of course, but also in, in English, and uh, we're discussing the next steps with the Finnish scouts now, if they are to set up their own course in Finland. So far we've done it jointly, but we're discussing it right now, what the next steps are there. And we're probably going to do a course in sort of the Öresund region, between south of Sweden and Denmark next year as well. We are very, very happy, if you are interested, to help uh, to give all our lessons learned, 
to help out if, if you are interested in doing something similar. But I think it's very important what Patrick pointed out that Sweden is extreme in many ways. So nothing can be duplicated uh, and done exactly the same thing. We're also, what, what's happened within the Swedish scout movement, furthermore, is that, like me, a lot of leaders that are too old to attend the course is really, really keen on going the course. And a lot of the companies that we are collaborating with, that are providing mentors to us, are telling us, hey, the participants are actually running ahead of our management teams that are mentoring uh, them. Uh, could could we send our young professionals to a course like this? And we're like, no, it's for the civil society. And they're like, but if we buy it? And we're like, no, it's for the civil society, but you're welcome to be a mentor. So what, what, what we are thinking about is, is offering parts of the concept, or at least do a pilot course or something, both for el those who are elderly, <laughs> or at least older, <laughs> Uh, and for for businesses, so that's probably the next step in in developing the concept further. On and uh, the leadership college of the Scouts of Sweden, Scouternas folkhögskola.se/english, and there are more information uh, about the course. We have some brochures uh, here in front. I have a bunch of credit, uh, not credit cards, business cards. <laughs> business cards uh, that I'm happy to, to get rid of. Uh, and we will stay here, Patrick, I, Martin, uh, maybe Ida, or some of, of Liamik, maybe perhaps, to answer any of, uh, any of your questions. And with that, I think we have actually done it in 90 minutes because we started a little bit late. Thank you. Yeah. Any from no online questions? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we say that you can do this course many times. We have uh, it only happened once. Uh, you can do the wood badge training many times. And when we're re revising the the training scheme as a whole now, uh, we're looking into how we can uh, continuously. Uh, offer training for our scout leaders. So, yeah, it's different. Although some parts, they, they share some elements, getting to know yourself and, and working in a group and stuff like that. Any other questions? In that case, uh, thanks a lot for listening um, and participating. Um, yeah, and have a good end of the day.